This lecture is about hydroelectric power, which is the generation of electricity using water. Back in 2015, the percentage of global energy produced via hydropower was 7%, which you can see is more than nuclear and renewable energy combined. So hydroelectric power is very widely used and is in fact the most widely used renewable way of generating energy. Hydroelectric power gets its energy from moving water. There are three types, storage in a lake, a pumped storage system, and tidal power. Hydroelectric power is renewable because water will always be moving around the planet, and it's the most used renewable energy resource in the world. Advantages of hydroelectric power include the fact that it's renewable, we won't run out, it's clean, there's no greenhouse gases or pollution released, it's very low maintenance once constructed, it's reliable, we can control when we get power out of it, it's reliable, we can control when we get power out of it. It's especially reliable compared to wind and solar, because on some days it may not be windy or it may be cloudy, but with water we always know when the tide will rise and fall and have a good understanding of how water will behave in general. And it can generate very large amounts of power relative to other types of renewable energy. Some disadvantages are that it's expensive to build, it can only be built in specific places, and it drastically changes the environment it's built in. It's an example of something that's extremely good for combating climate change, but probably very bad for the local environment that it's in. There are three types of hydroelectric power. The first is storage in a lake. In this situation, a dam holds water in a lake and releases it to harness the energy from the water. The water's gravitational potential energy is transformed into kinetic energy as it falls, which is captured by turbines in the dam. The second type is a pumped storage system. Here, water is pumped up to a certain height by an outside energy source and released when we want to get the energy out. This is a way of storing energy like a battery, but for very large electrical grids. And finally, there's tidal power, which captures the energy of rising and falling tides in the ocean to generate electrical energy. We can group each type into either a primary or a secondary energy source. Both storage in a lake and tidal power are examples of primary energy sources because these involve water naturally falling and humans capturing that energy. An advantage is that we do not have to put energy in to get energy out of the system. A disadvantage of these is that we cannot control when or how much water power we get out of the system unless we build a dam, and even then the water levels may naturally change. A pumped storage system is a secondary energy source because this involves humans artificially pumping water up to a height to capture the energy later. This is not an example of capturing energy directly from nature. Humans use the energy they generate in other power plants to pump the water up, so the pumped water acts as a battery. An advantage is we can access the stored energy whenever we need it. A disadvantage is that it's not a way of generating new energy, and some energy may be lost in the process. All three types of hydroelectric power rely on the water having gravitational potential energy. So we'll be working with the equation mass times gravity times height, but in problems about hydroelectric power, we're usually given a volume of water and its height and asked to find how much energy can be drawn from it. So we need a new equation that includes the volume of the water. The amount of water is not usually reported in mass, it's reported in volume, so we need a way of connecting mass and volume. Density is an object's mass over its volume and is symbolized by the Greek letter rho. So if I rearrange this, I find that mass is equal to density multiplied by volume. So I can replace mass in my potential energy equation with rho times v, density times volume. Those two things are equivalent. And unless otherwise stated, the density of water is always assumed to be 1 times 10 to the third kilograms per meter cubed. And because the water exists at different heights, we'll need to find the average height of the water for the potential energy equation. That line above the H indicates that we're taking a mathematical average to find the average height of all the water that we're dealing with. So our equation for gravitational potential energy in hydroelectric problems, density times volume times the acceleration of gravity times the average height of the water. So this is what we're going to be using in every equation to find the amount of energy in hydroelectric power stations. So I'll conclude with two examples. Let's say first that we have a container of water that looks like this, and we need to determine how much energy is inside of it. For a container like this, the average height of the water is going to be at exactly half the total height of the container, because half of the water is above that height and half of it is below, so the average will be at that exact middle point. So that means that the average height of the water that we'll use in our potential energy equation is equal to one half of the height of the container. We can now do an example problem. A 30 meter high dam holds back water with a surface area of 100 meters squared. If the dam has an efficiency of 0.4, how much energy can it capture from the water? So we're imagining that we have this dam here that allows water to flow through the bottom. 
and a turbine captures the energy, but it can only capture 40% of the energy because it's only 0.4% efficient. So we wanna know how much energy we can get out of this dam. I know that this is the density of water and the volume of the water is equal to its area multiplied by its height. Multiplying these out gets me 3000 meters cubed. The acceleration of gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. And the average height is gonna be one half times the height of the container, which is equal to 15 meters. Plugging all this into my potential energy equation gets me 4.41 times 10 to the eighth joules. So that's how much potential energy exists in the water. And we know that the dam can only capture 40% of it. So we can use the efficiency equation that says that the energy out is equal to the energy in times the efficiency. And we know that the energy going into the dam is that total gravitational potential energy and the efficiency is 0.4, so multiplying those out gets me an energy out of 1.76 times 10 to the eighth joules. So that's how much potential energy the dam can capture from the water. There will be times when you have a container of water atop a vertical pipe with a turbine at the very bottom. This is an example of a pumped storage system where water is artificially pumped up and then allowed to fall down through the turbine. Here you'll be given the height of the container as well as the height of the pipe. And because all the water has to flow down the pipe, all the water has to fall the same equal additional height. This means the full height of the pipe adds to the average height of the water. So this will be the average height equation when you're dealing with any water attached to a vertical pipe. As an example, a 32 meter high container of water is atop a 64 meter pipe and contains water with a surface area of 50 meters squared. If the turbine at the bottom has an efficiency of 0.4, how much energy can it capture from the water? So again, I write down what I know. I know the density of water is this, and the volume of the water is the area times the height. And notice here, I'm just talking about the volume of the container because that's where the water is at the beginning. So to figure out the volume of the water, I'm only using the height of the container, which is 32 meters. Gravity is still 9.81 meters per second squared. And the average height here is going to be one half the height of the container plus the full height of the pipe because all the water, no matter where it is, is also going to have to fall that 64 meters. Adding those together gets me an average height of 80 meters. So this is the potential energy equation. Multiplying these out gets me 1.26 times 10 to the ninth joules. And I know that the turbine is 40% efficient. So that's the energy going into the turbine. So to figure out the energy coming out, I can just multiply the energy in by the efficiency, which is 0.4, and that tells me that the total energy captured by the turbine and converted to electrical energy is 5.04 times 10 to the eighth joules. And that's everything that you need to know about solving problems with hydroelectric power in IB physics.